she didn't come home. Victims were also shot execution style. So they came up with this sketch of the suspect. Businesses also want security guards carrying guns. But rewind the clock 30 years, and it's the scene of a night some Wichitans will never forget. The I-70 killer is an unidentified American serial killer who is known to have killed six store clerks in the Midwest in the spring of 1992. His nickname derives from the fact that several of the stores in which his victims worked were located a few miles off of Interstate 70. His victims were usually young, petite, brunette women. One of the victims was a man, but it is believed that the killer may have expected a woman in the store due to the store having a woman's name. All of the stores attacked were specialty stores and were usually only robbed of small amounts of cash. He is also suspected of shooting three more store clerks in Texas during 1993 and 1994, one of whom survived, as well as a 2001 murder of a store clerk in Terre Haute, Indiana. Despite the case being featured on Unsolved Mysteries, America's Most Wanted, and Dark Minds, the killer is yet to be identified, and investigators have not publicly identified any suspects. The killing spree began on April 8, 1992, with the murder of 26-year-old Payless shoe store manager Robin Foldayer in Indianapolis. She was alone in the store when she was shot, having been murdered sometime around 1.30 p.m. Her body was discovered in a storage room in the back of the store around 3 p.m. Less than $100 had been stolen from the cash register. The next two murders occurred on April 11th at the La Bride de Elegance bridal shop in Wichita. The victims were Patricia Smith and the store's owner, 32-year-old Patricia Majors. As this was the only case involving multiple victims, investigators believed the killer was under the impression that there was only one woman in the store. The woman had stayed past the normal closing time of 6 p.m. to allow a male customer to pick up a cummerbund. Sometime after 6 p.m., the woman allowed the killer into the store, thinking he was the customer they were waiting for. After the woman were murdered, the actual customer arrived to pick up the cummerbund and came face to face with the I-70 killer. The customer noticed that the killer had a gun and the killer asked the customer to come with him to the back of the store. The customer refused, after which the killer told him to leave the scene. Had the customer cooperated with the killer, he almost certainly would have been murdered as well. The customer was so frightened that he did not report the incident until more than an hour had passed. He later provided details for a composite sketch of the killer, describing the killer as a slender white man with reddish hair armed with an Uzi-style gun. On April 27th, Michael McCown was killed in his mother Sylvia Ceramics store in Terre Haute, Indiana, around 4 p.m. McCown's wallet and less than $50 were stolen from the store. No witnesses reported seeing the killer beforehand. McCown was the only man killed during the spree, and it is believed by investigators that the I-70 killer chose the store because the store's solo woman's name, Sylvia Ceramics, seemed to make it a good target. Because McCown was reported to wear his hair in a ponytail and was shot from behind while he was kneeling to stock shelves, he may have been mistaken for a woman. On May 3rd, 24-year-old Nancy Kitts Miller was killed while working alone at a boot village, a footwear shop in St. Charles, Missouri. She opened up the shop at noon and was found dead by customers at 2.30 p.m. She had been shot in the back of the head. She was supposed to be off that day. However, she agreed to come in so that a co-worker could have the day off. Some money was taken from the cash register. Although no one heard the shot, a witness did see her with her final customer just minutes before her death, and this sighting helped police to create a composite drawing. The final confirmed murder occurred on May 7th in Raytown, Missouri. The victim was 37-year-old Sarah Blessing, who was working in her gift shop. The murder occurred during the day, and the owner of the video store next to Blessing's shop saw the killer into the shop, heard a pop, and then saw him leave. He discovered Blessing's body after checking to see what had occurred in the store. 
A clerk at a nearby grocery store also saw the suspect. He was climbing a hill towards I-70. In November of 2021, Terre Haute police announced that the I-70 killer was a possible suspect in the 2001 murder of a 31-year-old liquor store clerk, Billy Brosman. On the evening of November 3rd, 2001, Brosman was working alone at the 7th and 70 liquor store in Terre Haute. Security camera footage showed a white male suspect enter the store and pull a gun on Brosman and rob the cash register. The footage then showed the suspect lead Brosman to the back of the store and murder him with a single shot to the back of the head. The murder of Brosman occurred just seven blocks from the murder of Michael McCown and was similar in modus operandi to the I-70 murders. Unlike in the I-70 murders, security footage of Brosman's killer exists and police have stated they have a person of interest in the case. If you enjoy listening to these types of videos, consider subscribing as we upload videos every week on Mondays. I also want to thank you for tuning in. If it wasn't for you, the viewers, this channel would cease to exist.